we working on the audio. The first episode, second, probably the third was a little rough, but we working third on that. Third much better. The right first one was like, oh, this shit sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking in a sandbox. Like, we, we, we just came, we had a, like, hey, a little. Y'all, just, y'all had something to speak about, and y'all, we yes. will listen to y'all talk about it. Yes, um, yes. We, I hey, it, once though. again. My th- I talk shit, but I'm here to support. Don't ever get that twisted. I you know, love that's, it. That's something we it. got in our culture, a big problem that we may discuss, too. Oh, uh, But maybe it's a problem, maybe it's not, but we'll get into it. So, <laughs> yeah. Children laughing around you. These are the makings of you. It is true. Okay, you know, hello, hello, what's up, good people? It's your host, Mr. D713 with Everything Culture. We're back with the Makers of You, and right now we have Ashley Davis with the Vibe Killer Podcast. Hi, hello. What's up, Ashley? How you doing? <laughs> I am so happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Okay, okay. You're the <laughs> other part for this upcoming episode's so guest. You're once again, you're one half of Vibe Killer. We we've already taken care of your guests, um, your co-host, Kimberly. <laughs> now we're going to you. Okay. So Ashley, the Ashley Davis that's how everybody should, you know, find you and communicate with you and properly mm-hmm. call you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. We love you. We love you. So we've already talked a little bit. You haven't listened to much of the makers of you or everything culture, but it's okay. We don't judge. We still have time, you know. Yes. We do yes. judge, but we don't discriminate. We're not prejudiced. <laughs> We're not prejudiced. We're not gonna, you know, oh, stop Lord. you from getting I, on here or anything like that. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna do better. Okay, that's all we can. That's all we expect. <laughs> but you knew better, you do better. You know? Now yes. you know. All right, all right. So you know, the makers of you is gonna be. A few questions, most of them open ended, meaning when I ask the question, I'm not going to give you any direction after that. You just answer how you feel like answering the question. And it's just to give our audience a little bit of a deep dive, a little bit more about you to see, you know, where you come from, um, perhaps why you do the things you do and why you think the way you think. So feel free to answer how you feel comfortable as answering. If you don't feel comfortable with the question, just say, no, thank you. And just keep going. We'll go to the next one. So the first question we have, how would you describe yourself? Uh, um, well, I am very loyal. And I, um, I have a, set, a certain type of friends that I keep in my circle. They have been around for a long time. And I, you know, even though I, we may not speak for months, but we never stop our love for each other or our friendship. Um, and um, I am easygoing. Very, I, I do not like arguing. I do not like uh, confrontation. That's one of them. But I am easygoing. Like little stuff does not bother me. But it's, but that took a long time for me to get that way uh, mm-hmm. because I just knew I didn't want to waste energy on something, something that can be fixed within a minute or a second or, you know, so, um, that's just me. Um, I, I have goal oriented. I, I have goals. I have goals. I have things I want to do. Um, that's why I'm working on my master's right now in social work. Cause I want to help, um, especially African Americans <laughs> um, with therapy, um, I feel like we need to really invest in ourselves and are our, our, our the people that are truly cherish though that we truly cherish and talk about ways of thinking outside of our normal box. So that's why I am working on this degree. Pray for me. Um, cause I am a procrastinator. So that's, another, <laughs> so that's another thing. But, um, I also, one of the biggest things that just drives me is, um, equity, especially with, um, black people. I want us to win. Like I want us to win. And I am, I'm just, I, these times are really have been getting, um, I've been playing with my emotions because I don't understand how people can see what they what is going on is fair or what, is, how is that? Okay. Like 
I always want to turn that around and say, well, if your grandmother, if this has happened to your white grandmother or your your Caucasian grandmother, would it be okay? Or if it was a your son being stopped on the side of the street because he in the wrong neighborhood, how would you feel about that? So I am always about you talk about this as the land of the free, but who is it really free for? Like, so that is a big thing of mine. I don't know. I some and I know some people get tired of me posting about racial stuff on our Instagram page or so even you don't on, wanna, you oh, don't post it. Okay. All the time. Like uh, if uh, I see something <laughs> You got a lot of questions. We still gotta do the show. I mean oh, we sorry. got you got no, you're fine, but in the whole time you're talking, I'm in my head like this motherfucker spitting. But I'm like <laughs> Well, we gonna, but we're gonna get into this. We gonna get into this. I love it. Yeah. What do you identify as? I identify as an African American uh, woman. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not. I, yeah, that's it. I don't because I was gonna say I. Am I no, I'm not. No, I'm an African American woman. Um, thirty five years old. No, thirty six. Damn it! I'm gonna get it together. Oh, Ashley. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a life. I'm like, After 35, you stop counting. So I don't even really. You just like, live in life. Live I'm your living. life. Live your life. Okay. I do have a fiance. Um, he is a football coach and he's gone because it's football season in Texas. So what? let's just pray for that. Um, also, um, a little bit about our family. I always go to the. Well, because COVID is disproportionalized, we lost four of his family members to wow. COVID within a two month span. We lost, we lost three in one month and then we lost his grandfather, which we thought he was going to get better, but he did it. So, wow. but, and that's why I'm a big person, big advocate, wear your damn mask, like spreading your nasty germs everywhere. So I'm a big component of wear your mask. So that's me. <laughs> thank you thank you you know i are you making me biased on here i'm like okay i'm like, I'm like an ashley like, <laughs> like have we talked before okay all right what is your sign i am an aries aries um, okay yes, yes. That, is that air or that fire no, we're no i don't know i thought i was the i, I thought i was a goat an ugly looking no. it, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Oh, I, it ain't it ain't water because I can't swim. So oh, that's okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll figure that all out in a second. We'll go. We we'll do the Googles in a moment. We'll do the fact checking. All I right. love it. How would you define your childhood and your upbringing? Um. Oh, oh, oh! You getting in there? Okay, so um, I grew up with a single parent mom till mm-hmm. I was thirteen. Um, she got married to a loser. Uh, she stayed married to him for 20, 27 years. Um, wasn't a great marriage. I I learned a lot. I'm going to just put this way. Um, because I knew what kind of marriage I didn't want. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the biggest things that I learned is submission. It's not given. It's earned. Mm-hmm. And I am not going to submit to a person or, um, yeah, submit to a person if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And I will not. And, um, I'm not going to, my mom, basically my mom was the caretaker. She was the provider. She was the the caretaker. Um, and she also was the one that was financially responsible because he wasn't and found out he'd been cheating all these years. So Mm -hmm. he was basically using her. And I want to say the best thing that ever happened for them in their marriage was when the ho- our my house that I grew up in um, burned to the ground, and they were right. able to get money, and they were finally not struggling. And I was um, I was in toddler then. Um, I already had moved out and everything, but that was the first time I actually seen them not struggling, not scraping, rob- robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, I, okay. So then back to me at the age of 13, I 
thought one man was my dad <laughs> all this time. People saying, oh, you look like him and you look like his sisters and all this stuff. And then my mom goes for a DNA test. She's trying to put him on child support because it was time. It was time. And so um, then come to find out I wasn't. So that kind of crushed my world because I was like, this man I thought <laughs> was my dad. Um, he wasn't. So I had to learn a whole new man, <laughs> a whole new family. And this, um, my dad, I love him to death. We'll get it together. But, um, it, you know, he didn't want kids. He did not want kids. Um, and so he comes to find out he has a 13-year-old. And having to start from there, you don't have a baby. You don't get to grow. You have to learn. We have to learn each other's personalities, which was still hard. Like, um, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's still hard. 13 year, 13 year old African-American woman. Little yes. girl, like you say. Yes. No, I didn't um, use female because I've seen that some, you know, subculture of black women <laughs> get very <laughs> by using the word female, even though that encompasses, that's the word that should encompass a woman and a yes, girl but together. I, but yes. we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so that was, it, it was, it was difficult. It's still difficult. Um, we're trying to build our relationship. Um, you know, we live in the same town and he's been to my house. I've been living here eight years. He's been to my apartment one time. So it's just building up that relationship. I, I mean, and I'm going to say, I'm not going to lie. Um, when he got married, I love my stepmom. She's wonderful. I was a bitch and I didn't want to be in the wedding. And I said, hell no, I don't want to be in that wedding. Like I, so I know I have my flaws, but I want, I, you know, um, I'm just going to, so I, I had a miscarriage last, uh, last year, um, 20, June of 2019. And I told, when I was pregnant, I was so excited to tell my dad and my stepmom because they, they were not able to have kids. And I said, and I told them, I said, I want y'all to be a part, which my, my baby's name was Avery, of Avery's life. So what do y'all want? When I told them that it was a girl, when I told them, you know, about, when, you know, about the, the baby showers that we're going to have, I wanted them to be there from the beginning all the way. And they were. They came when I um, ended up having the miscarriage. They were at the hospital. They came right away. And um, we already had picked up, uh, picked out grandpa's, net, you know, Papa and Gigi. And so I wanted them to be a part of our baby's lives because I know that my dad, he, you know, he has nieces and nephews that he does, you know, he spends time with and they help them grow. I wanted him to do that same thing for his actual biological grandbaby. So we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. It's just, it's, I mean. It, it takes time. It's it takes time. Right. And, and we both stubborn. So that's just, those are the facts. So. Do you like, have any siblings? No, I am the only child. Okay. Did you, yeah. did you want any siblings growing up? Hell no. Okay. Like, okay. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My mom always said that she should have had um, other kids. I was like, why? You didn't need that. It's fine. Okay. Um, okay. One of, but here's another thing. I don't identify as the only child because um, I grew up with my grandmother from from one to thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my we, me and my mom and my other cousins and their mom, we all stay with our grandmother. Okay, we all live with our grandma. So well, okay, okay, then I, that's a conversation. And so, that's a, <laughs> so we all stay with her. We grew up like sisters. We fought like sisters. I mean, drag out fights going down. Especially we had an older cousin because my both my mom and my grandmother they were teachers. So during the summertime they still had to go to work. So we we there and we playing something. We don't somebody say something we don't like. We it's about to go down. And okay. so it was. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so but then when I I was devastated when I had when my mom remarried. First of all, we'll talk about that because. Black people need to get it to get 
stop stop holding stuff from your kids. That's a big thing. Um, and that's another thing that I grew up with because I didn't know that I was going to a different school until the Sunday before school started. Like, I'm staying with my grandmother the whole summer thinking, oh, we're going to go to school, you know. And then my mom picked me up and she was like, well, Ashley, we got to go. And I was like, well, school starts tomorrow. And she was like, well, um, you're going to start, you're going to go to school at Angles Point. And I said, no, I'm not. My cousins, we all go to school together here. Mm-hmm. And I just remember kicking and screaming the whole way to Will's point. I I know I didn't cry. But then this is where my anxiety and my depression started because I never realized it. I had depression until I got into mental when started working into mental health. Um but I was I had bad anxiety and depression. Um it it was really bad. It was really bad. And I didn't know how to handle it. I I didn't self medicate but I coped with it. And come to find out, my that's how my body was dealing with my anxiety, which was not it. It was great because it still carries on to this day when I have my when I have high anxiety uh, situations. My body still will react the way I was when I was thirteen. So okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Where do you consider home? Oh, <laughs> what do I consider home? Where do you I, consider home? Where, I'll be honest with you. I consider home Kaufman, Texas with my grandmother um, because those were the happiest moments that, I mean, I mean, my grandma's still living. That When I go to her house, I feel like I belong. I and honestly, you know, she did say that you know the house is a it's a homestead, so it can't be sold. Um, but one of the things is that we, if we ever feel ourselves in trouble, we can always come back. And my cousins have used that multiple times. I still have it, but I but if I need to, I can't. But I guess why I would consider that place as soon as I um, went to college. Um, my stepdad wrapped up my room. Like he was like, Oh, she gone. And get the, like, and I'll, it, I was devastated. Cause like, I have no place. I have no belonging. And, um, this new house that, um, my mom had, I definitely don't have, like, I don't have a sense of this is where you grew up. This is, this is where you belong. And so my mom is always like, well, why don't you spend the night? This ain't my house. I got to go to my house, which is my apartment. But still, I consider until I do get a house house. Um, I always consider home for me is with in Coffin, Texas at my grandmother's house. So, yeah. OK. OK. Do you have did you have any chores growing up? Chores? Chores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I hated it because. I had to do the women work and I cannot stand that to this day. Um, Is it the women work because of the, the type of work or is the women work because it was the gender role behind it? Gender role. Okay. Um, So you didn't mind going outside mowing the yard and taking out the trash? I'm taking out the trash. Now, now, now I have allergies, so I can't be uh, mowing lawn. I have allergies too. <laughs> I have allergies too. So, <laughs> like, uh, but that's part of the work, you know. But I would do like I, I tried it. It's not that I wouldn't do it. Like if mm-hmm. I had to do it, I don't mind doing it. You just saying like, once again, you didn't like it because it was a you're a girl or you're yes. a female, yes. and you're yes. expected yes. to do this work. Exactly. Okay. We okay. did like we did the cleaning. Like Sunday morning, we were uh we're up cleaning the house. We're inside. We're the guys like they're not that you don't mow every week now. Like you don't you don't do that. I mean, I took out the trash because I didn't want to do something in the house. Like I, I hate folding up clothes. Excuse me. I you know, that's one of the things is that but we had to do the dishes. I was like, why do we gotta do the dishes? Why can't they do the dishes? And it was just more of, no, that's what the women do. And I hated that. And so I have carried that on into my relationship now because I, my fiance knows I, and that's why I love him so much is because we're partners. It's not, well, I'm the man. I have to do this. 
or you're the woman, you do that. It's like, well, let's do this together. Let I mean, I take out the trash. He washes dishes. He cooks. I'm, you know, like, so it's, we're a partners. And so that was one of the biggest things. Now, Kim knows from my last relationship, that was the biggest thing that I could not. He was like, well, the women do this. And I just couldn't. That, just true, that was a me. trigger for you. Oh, I was like, well, what if I was sick and we had children? Am I expected to still cook and clean? Yes. And that was. And because there was an incident where I we both were sick. I had fever. He he didn't have fever, but he wasn't feeling good. It wasn't a and, year 2019, was it? No. Okay. No. Oh, 2020. I mean, I just want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, he was sick. And one of the problems was, was that I still have to take care of him when I'm still not feeling good. And I'm just like, oh, I can't do this. I cannot. I can't be expected to still cook and do all this. And then I'm sick. Like, I need somebody to know. I need to know that if I'm sick, you can take care of the kids or you can still hold it down without me having to prompt you or anything like that. So. Okay. What were and what are your beliefs? Ooh. <laughs> because I am a Christian. I am a Christian. I, and one of the things is that I love everybody. Um, I don't, I don't discriminate. I have no, I, I feel like I have no room to judge anybody. Uh, but because things have been going on nowadays and just going back to the history of slavery, I'm, they use Christianity against us. So, so I'm like, what was what was our religion before we became slaves? Before we crossed the Atlantic Ocean, what was our religion before then? Because they use they use Christianity against us. They put it, it's still in doctrine in us till this day. And, and, I'll, and I'm gonna ask the question. You don't ask a lot of questions, but you say <laughs> they. Who is they? <laughs> Um, the slave owners of the colonizers. Past. Okay. Yes, colon. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just yes. toss your little bone out there for <laughs> Yes, because I was like, what? Okay, that, I know yeah, where I'm you're right. going. I know where you're going. Um, because <laughs> that and I, you know, I don't think about that word. But anyway, but yes, yes. Um, and they use that to for us to in saying we'll get ours when we get over to the other side, or you know, um. Or don't rebel against your masters. God wouldn't want you to do that. Prime example, they sent Nat Turner, I think that's the name, Nat Turner and around to, to spread this gospel, this, and saying like, hey, you need to listen to your slave owners. You'll get yours when you come up. And then five, he was like, this is wrong. And they had a um, rebellion. And Why is why is Christianity your religion? Sound like at this moment. <laughs> well, because I don't know of anything else. And all those other ones, I mean, I need to do some research. Um, but these other ones kind of, you know, put a, a damper on women and I can't do that. Like, I, I yeah. Okay. Like, I, I need to be, I need to feel independent. I need to feel like my voice is heard. I don't need to feel shamed for it or I have to work. I mean, and I'm not knocking anybody who they're, they're, they're okay with their religion if they, that's how they feel. But I guess I am not. I need to be able to speak my truth, live my truth. Mm. And if a man has a, or somebody has a problem with that, then I don't need to be a part of that. Like I should be, I'm pro-choice. That's, I mean, I should be able to do whatever I want with my body. And I not even like let me just, I'm gonna even I, if I'm a sex worker and I want to make money off my walk, then I should be able to. I'm with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. What was an impactful moment in your life? Um. You mentioned quite a few. Yeah. Oh that. yeah. But if you just want to share one, you know. Mm. Or you can just repeat the one you mentioned already. Oh. Uh, 
<laughs> I want to say the most, I would say it was in college, um, was like the turning point because, um, and my mom to this day still say, like, ever since she went to college, you got this, you know, you just talk, you have all these big ideas and all this stuff. And I was like, that's what college is for. You're Where did you go to college? To- I went to SFA, Stephen F. Austin. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, at, <laughs> hell, they in trouble now, but we go. You know, um, but I, because I start to think for myself, I thought, you know, I started to think of what I wanted, how I wanted my life to not look, necessarily look like, but how I wanted to be, how I wanted to feel, how I wanted to go in this world. And I didn't like, you know, my mom, her her views are di- and sometimes we get into we do get into it about like gay rights you know I'm st- my thing is she's like oh well that's not well there's a lot of things we get into but it's, because first of all you know what I'm gonna say uh, you might cut it out well you know you tell one, me <laughs> well one of the things I remember coming from college and one of the things that she said was, don't let no guy lick on you. She's like, that's not that's not right. And I said, maybe not for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, so you said that's going to be for the OnlyFans only material right there. <laughs> so we're going back. Okay. Yeah. If you had a theme song, what would it be? Oh, it's Pretty Young Thing by Michael Jackson. Yes. P-Y-T. I, okay. Yes. Okay. I just, okay. Yes, it's it's just you know coming into a room and just you know having say I'm pretty giving yourself this self confidence, not needing it for anybody else, and it just yeah, that's my song. That okay. is my song. All right. How would you define joy? How do I um? I will find define joy as being. You know, being okay where you are and, you know, still wanting to grow, still wanting to, but knowing that there are steps to take to get there, not trying to hustle your way to get there illegally. You know, if you're doing different businesses, that's fine. But being able to say, I am okay where I am and living in that truth and, you know, just growing from, you know, doing what you want to do. In your in your own time in your own um, circle of life, so I think that's what. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What privileges do you benefit from? <laughs> what privileges? I think. Well, I know there's some things like being the only child on my mom with my mother. I do get away with a lot of things. Um. Um. Because I do talk that I'm I'm hard headed. <laughs> I I know there's some things that I should should not be doing, but I'm grown. We're grown. But well, uh, <laughs> well that that kind of goes into the next question. <laughs> How are you disciplined growing up? I okay. I got whoopings. Like okay. I did. Like, but I know. Like as I start growing up, I just noticed that I started getting away with a lot more things. Um, cause I, I mean, the biggest fight that me and my mom ever had was about my real dad. Cause I was like, why is he, why did you not know that this man was my dad? Cause I'm trying to build this relationship with him and he's not really trying to build a relationship with me. And I wanted a dad. Like also I've seen everybody else have dads. Um, I get, I, I, I actually get a little jealous of people who have a good, like, is, I, cause I want to be a, da- a daddy's girl. I wanted that. You know, I felt like that's what kind of molded me into being this. Because sometimes people say that I have a nigga mentality when it comes to guys. We'll, we'll get on that. Because I'm hard. Like, I'm like, I, I'm like, you going to do you, I'm going to do me. We're going to go about our business. Like, I don't put up with nothing. Um, but then also, I do a lot of things, too, where I'm just like, look. This is me. This is who I am. This is what you're going to get. Either you like it or you don't. Go on about your business. But I want it, you know, but I, we, that was one of the biggest fights we had was because I wanted that relationship. I've seen everybody else have a dad 
and here I am. I did it. And I got to, you know, I, wanting that relationship, wanting that, you know, thing of just having somebody, a man, just helping you or just say, you know, navigating the men's world. I had to, I had some hard times where I had, I got, um, I was heartbroken because I didn't know how to navigate the men <laughs> if that was in my life in the time or, you know, notice the cheating or putting up with the cheating or putting up with the lies. Like, I wish, I wish I had somebody that I could have went to and said, hey, dad, this is going on. You know, somebody to protect me. My stepdad was shit. So, no. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who were and who are your role models? Um, okay. So, uh, I would say in which I, I it's my cousin Brady. And, um, and the reason why, Brandy is super smart. She had a baby at the age of 16. Um, but my grandparents, my grandmother would not allow her to quit school. Mm-hmm. She was like, nope. Um, Brandy ended up going to school for TVC. Uh, she went to Trinity uh, Valley. Then she went and ended up going to TWU. Um, then, you know, she got her master's. Um, now she has her own business. I mean, it's just and it's because Brandy. yes, it because she she had, she has three kids. I mean, Jesus help us. Like I mean, during these like pivotal moments, she was like, I don't want to be like my mom. And her mom is uh, on drugs really bad, hmm. and so she could have easily easily said, you know what, I'm tired of this. I needed something to cope with because that's what her mom did and started taking drugs. And she could have been in that life easily, but she said, I wanted something better for my kids. She ended up owning her own home at the age of 24. Like, I mean, she went out there and she grabbed life by the horns. Like she's like, I, yes, yes. I had like, yes, I have this baby. Well, at that time she had to, but she, but she never let it stop her. And I just heard drive and me and her can sit on the phone um, for hours just talking about things and and I just love it because she's super, super smart. Yeah. Um, and so I'm bringing the holler at us. I want to know a sure little more Brandy story too. <laughs> from. Yes, yes. Like that. Yeah, she, um, I mean, like I said, now she owns her own business and she is always, because when I talk to her, I get to, I'm getting teary eyed now because she was the one that kept pushing me. Like she was the one that said, Ashley, this is, I mean, cause I, t- I will talk to her about, you know, I don't want to do student loan debt. She's like, Ashley, it's an investment. In this it's a, it's an investment. It's an investment into your future. Cause I told her about wanting my master's and she's like, go get it, get it. So you can be, you could, so you can have your own business. She's all about having your own business and you know, not working for the man. You know, she said, I can take off whenever I want. She said, I got these people working for me. I have been. She said, when I don't want to come into work, I'm not coming into work because this is my business. Um, And um, even and then I talked to her about going for my JD to become a lawyer. You know, (laughs) I was like, I want to do this. And she's like, do it, do it. But when I had these conversations with my mother, she's like, you got it. You got your degree. Work for twenty years at the same job. Retire because that's what she's done. That's her mentality: is work. You get your degree. You work. Don't you don't need to do anything else. Okay. So I don't have those conversations. But with Brady, she's always saying, "Go for it. Do All it. Right. Which, whatever you need. Whatever you need to talk about. Let, we, let's explore it." Like you know, she even told me about. Um, SMU because SMU does give scholarships to minorities. Mm-hmm. She said, make sure you go there. Like she said, they just always giving kickbacks because uh, there's not a lot of us there. So I was like, okay. And so she's like, but do it. She's, you know, so yeah. Brandy the go-getter. That's on my yes. call until I meet her. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you could hit the reset button on life, would you? If you could just start all the way over. <sighs> Um, 
Oh, I want to say yes, because I wish I could have done a lot of things differently. But then I'm kind of, I'm happy where I am. I love my job. Um, I'm working with students in higher education um, that have, that with disabilities, um, in, encouraging them, like, to keep going, to not stop, to go for your dreams. Um, one of my biggest accomplishments while I was at my job was seeing one of my students who is legally blind she graduated wow. and yes and she's working she lives on her own and i mean to see that and not you know not feeling like she okay like i have to just live off social security or and i'm not saying that's wrong, wrong for anybody you gotta do what you gotta do with it. but she didn't want that for herself she wanted to be independent she wants she wants um she wants a family. She wants to, I mean, and that to see her graduate is such a joy. Lifting. And so it's uplifting. Yes. And so I, I mean, I, I am, it took me a long time to get where I am. Um, with especially not letting the little things bother me, having great friends, achieving goals. Yeah. It might've took me 10 years to decide to go back for my master's, but it was all in God's timing. And uh, hey, you know what? It's a blessing because I might have, I might not have been ready then. I was probably been slacking off. I know that back ten years ago I was in transition from jobs, so I really wasn't um, trying to find a relationship because that's what I was supposed to do: get married. Uh, so you know, I might have had babies, or you know, so I, I didn't honestly know. No. Okay. Okay. See, see that quick change, y'all? You hear that? There ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> How do you relax? <laughs> I relax with, um, I love craft. I love doing um, projects. I Crafting. You craft- love crafting. Yeah. Not I thought you said craft. crack. Oh, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> no, what? crafting. Crafting. Um, I... Um, I got a cricket and I do decals on tumblers and stuff like that. <laughs> and, so, okay. and so that's what I do for fun. Like I, I love being creative. I love it when people just get like, here's the colors I want. Go at it. Okay. And that's, that's my, that's my thrill. That's my, I love doing it. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah, I enjoy that. That's my, that's, my, and then reading. Like, especially now going on, I'm trying to read some more uh, culturally sensitive books. Like, there's one called The Color of Law. I'm trying, because I'm trying to understand these people, why they think the way they think. Like, I need to know why. <laughs> you know, that's exactly why we do this whole show right here, right? Yeah, that's exactly. The full purpose behind this. Yes, yes. Because hey, I need to yeah. know. I mean, I don't understand why they think like this. Like, I need to know. Why. This whole process you have right here to make us you, same questions go for them. Yeah. Yes. So, love it. I love trying it. to get there. Yeah. Um, so, what is a quote that you live by? Um, I, I guess I would say hope for the best, expect the worst. Mm, and, I do too. <laughs> and the reason why is that. Well, prepare uh, for the worst. That's awesome. Prepare for the best. You prepare for the worst. Yes. Well, and the reason why is that I go in with the mentality of, prime example, I don't believe in bad days. I don't. It's just, to me, it's just a day that does, they didn't work out the way you wanted it to to go you wake up late you scrambling like for me today i woke up late trying to do stuff but guess what it's okay you had a plan you you was working on kill so i was like okay i'm good like so i'm just like it, it i don't believe in bad days i don't i don't like the word bad i don't like the word bad you once again, this is your time, so I'm gonna get. We'll talk more and more about it, but you know, I try to give it. To, I, I usually don't talk this much during the makings of you. I always say that, um, but I, 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 I'm the same way about that. Exact same mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. All right, last meal. What would it be, and who would prepare it? Um. Hmm. Anybody? <laughs> 
anybody, my, anybody. Yeah. My last, oh, never thought of that. I, I don't know. But anyway, oh. and it, it was, if, it's, if that's your answer, you don't know, it's okay. I don't, because I don't know. Because I'm, I, like, I, no, I have no idea. Okay, no okay. idea. No, no, cool. Next question. <laughs> uh -huh. What is your favorite holiday? Thanksgiving, even though they slaughtered. A lot of Native no. Americans. <laughs> but the reason why is because I enjoy getting together with my family. We, I, I mean, I get, I am, I don't know what we're going to do this year. Um, last year I was pissed off because people had separate Thanksgiving. I said, what the hell? Because I'm the coordinator. I, I, you know, I'm sending out stuff. So at the end on thir October 31st, I'm getting my list together. So what we're going to do for Thanksgiving, where are we going to go? What kind of games we're going to play? Cause I bring the games. Um, and so that's what I just love being together with my cousins. I love it. I love it. I love it. Even though we fought back in the day, we're actually even closer now. Um, and so that I, that's seeing my grandmother, seeing everybody in one spot, and just having a good time and laughing and joking. I love it. That's that's my favorite holiday. And I like to cook. I bring the mac and cheese. Um, yes. So everybody asks for my mac and cheese. So yeah. I'm, okay. I'm about to say, is it, <laughs> is it requested or you just bring it? It's a difference. <laughs> It's a difference. It's, a difference. it's requested. Uh, and, right. and, I, and I don't think I've asked this question on season three yet, but uh -huh. it, was a, it was a heavy question in season one. But which one do you eat? Stuffing or dressing? Dressing. Yeah. Dressing. Is stuffing. They put too much oregano uh, or something. You, you, you don't have to say that. <laughs> yeah, you answered the question correctly. I mean, we good. Hey. We good. Yes. Yeah. All right. How would you like people to remember you? Um, just a person that is down for the cause if you need me. Now, I'm not going to jail, but I'm down for the cause if you need me. <laughs> uh, you know, but I, I, I'm a ride or die for you. You know, if we need to go roll by somebody's house, I'm there. Um, done it plenty of times. Not too long ago, and uh, <laughs> but I I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm you know. Please don't incriminate yourself on the time <laughs> culture. We would hate for that to happen. No, no. Um, but I'm loyal, and I'm always looking at things differently. Um, I sometimes my friends get they want me to be on their side when it comes to well, what do you you think he's doing this? I was like, well. Let's look at it at a bigger picture. What's going on for him? So I, I'm an outside of the box thinker. I'm not always confined to this certain thinking mentality. Uh, but I'm always going to be that listening ear. I, you know, even if I've heard it seven billion gajillion times, I'm still going to listen to you, um, and talk. And I'm going to talk it out with you. Like, let's talk it out. Like, what are you feeling? How are you feeling? What, what are you thinking? And I am that person. So, yeah. How would you describe your culture? My culture. And this is the last question, by the way. <laughs> you better be for the black cause. That's all I got to say. Well, my culture is like, but loving everyone too. Like, I, it burns me up when I hear people talk about gay people, and I'll cut you off because, I, like, I, I, I can't have that. I'm not going to do that. You know, um, I'm a person. I just want every. I want people to get along. One, um, one of the things I hate to see is when I see black people fighting. Like that's uh, that drives me nuts. And it you it it better be something good. It better not be over no chick, and it better not be over no five dollars. Uh, but um, I'm gonna ask you. Usually, I don't define for everything culture for the makes of you, especially. He's open ended. Uh -huh. But if, if some rent, if someone, uh, if a alien uh -huh. landed and mm -hmm. would like describe your culture, how would you tell them about your culture? I would tell them that. My, wow, okay, my culture about um, 
my culture is mixed race of people of all shades of color. We love everybody. We don't discriminate or talk down or try to be superior to each other. We all come in to help our fellow man. That's my culture. That's the that's my um, idea of of my culture. But yeah, we got a long way to go. Now the alien be like, "Well, hell no! I just saw y'all uh, lock up somebody." <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'll be like, well, this is in my head. This okay. is what I want it to be. And, like, and, that's, and, that, and that was the question. How would you define it? And that's yeah. what we do appreciate. So yeah. thank you so much, Ashley. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm looking forward to our show. Y'all make sure to get ready. It will be out in a few days, you know, back with everything culture. We don't have the title yet, but we'll have it by the time y'all listen to this. And once again, this is Ashley Davis with the Vibe Killer Podcast. I mean, other half with Kimberly. Y'all make sure to check them out on all social media. Well, no, not social, all play all podcast platforms, Mm -hmm. but you can find them on Instagram for show at the Mm -hmm. Vibe Killer Podcast. Um, Are y'all on any other social media sites? No. <laughs> okay. Well, find them on Instagram. Um, yeah. If you're following Everything Culture, you know we po- post about them at least about once a week so far. They're on their fourth, fifth episode right now. But, you know, show them love, follow, share, yeah. listen, review. But make sure to check them out on our upcoming episode this week. Thank you all, and God bless. <laughs>